So jeans are really cool, especially skinny jeans. You can just eat, and eat, and eat, and not have to worry about gaining all this. Jeans do, after all, make you who you are. Physically speaking, anyway. But that's it, right? Hey, Loxton here, and genes and DNA are pretty cool. They tell your body how to build and maintain itself. And it's been known for some time that it also has an effect on your personality traits. Though not nearly as strongly as it dictates your physical self. Maternal twins separated at birth, though being raised in completely different cultures, completely different parts of the world, completely different families, will still have an almost identical personality. And the more or less similar the twins are genetically, the more or less personality traits they share. These personality traits they share are also personality traits that their biological parents often have too. Because of this, scientists do know that genes do play a role in all of the psychology that goes on in your skull. Though as far as that goes, it isn't dictated. If you put enough effort into it, you can change your personality. But you can't just strain yourself and get blonder hair! But which gene is it exactly? Well, funny story. Every time scientists manage to pinpoint a gene that they think is the culprit, more and more studies on that gene specifically show that it really isn't that one. At all. So to this day, scientists do not know which genes specifically manage your psychology. But they do know that your genes have an effect. But personality is one thing, yeah? So what about... memories? Could the premise of Assassin's Creed be possible one day? In case you are unaware, Assassin's Creed is not based in the past. It is based in the future. You play as a descendant of a long line of assassins, and you are having your DNA read to go through the memories of your ancestors. Sounds pretty ridiculous, right? Unlike personality traits, memories are a big, complicated mess. Memories aren't stored and controlled by glands or specific regions of the brain, but rather, they are spread out everywhere in every little nook and cranny in the brain it can get into. This is why people with amnesia can still remember how to do things like walking, and even things as advanced as language, because things that are that important get stored everywhere. If one part of the brain gets damaged, you can still function. But that's all in the brain. It's not created or even recommended to be created by DNA whatsoever. These are experiences and things you learn throughout life being stored like a hard drive. The blueprints of a hard drive don't tell it to have Skyrim and a butt-ton of mods on it. So obviously this entire premise of Assassin's Creed just isn't possible. You can't pass down memories to your children. That's not what the title of this video seems to insinuate at, though. Oh yeah, that's because it is possible. The Emroy University of Medicine explored this topic for quite some time, and they discovered that, yes, at least in mice, memories do get passed down a few generations. They did this test by making mice develop a fear of the scent of cherry blossoms. Every time that scent was introduced to them, they would soon be electrically shocked. <laughs> That's so terrible! That's so terrible! After a while, the mice would develop a phobia of this scent. Every time the scent was introduced, they would start panicking. True fear. Fears and phobias are some of our most deeply ingrained memories. If in your youth you saw a rabid dog attack your family, possibly killing a family member, you would develop a phobia of dogs. Which is good, because what if another dog wanted to do the same to you? Your brain is telling you Dogs are dangerous, avoid them. And odds are, you will remember that for life. It's called a scarring experience for a reason. So these mice feared cherry blossoms, of all things. They then took those poor mice and bred them, and raised their offspring, away from the original parents. These new mice were never introduced to electric shock, or the scent of cherry blossoms in their lives. 
But sure enough, after they'd grown up, they were introduced to the scent of cherry blossoms, and they panicked. Despite not ever in their lives knowing what the scent of cherry blossoms or what being electrocuted is like, they somehow knew that the scent of cherry blossoms meant pain. Or possibly, they didn't even know why they were scared. They just were. And another generation of mice down, same thing. This suggests that experiences, memories, at least the ones as powerful as a phobia, manage to get themselves into our genomes, which lets us pass them down. It was previously known that PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, can be passed down to your child. That is, if whatever triggered your post-traumatic stress disorder happened while you were pregnant with them. But this new study brings a whole nother level to this situation. And this is still being looked into, though, the detailed memories, such as the people and architecture of your surroundings during just another typical assassination mission, are most likely not going to be passed down a hundred generations. Though perhaps someday, we will have technology similar to this, and be able to figure out what deeply ingrained memories our ancestors have left behind for us. Science is some pretty cool stuff. <laughs> Those poor mice, though. <laughs> Stay awesome, guys.